you know, maybe it's the mean little kid in me, but I sort of enjoy taking perfectly good carpet and ripping it up and getting it out of the way. The reason we're doing this is because in a bathroom, carpet really doesn't make a lot of sense. It picks up a lot of moisture, holds the moisture, becomes mildewy, and so it's not a really very good surface. What we're going to do is replace the carpet with some tiles. Ceramic tile is the fastest growing flooring material in the country these days, and for good reason. We're going to show you how easy it is for a do-it-yourselfer to install this stuff. First though, we've got to get the floor taken care of, and that means getting rid of the tack strips all the way around. That's a pretty easy but tedious thing to do. Now if you're going to be crawling around on a concrete floor, it's a good idea to wear some knee pads. They don't cost a lot and they'll sure save your knees. Now that we've got all the tack strips up and we've swept up the debris, it's time for us to go around and cut off the door jams. What we'd like to do is to be able to put the tile so it slides in under there, and as you can see it's a little too narrow. So we're going to put this piece of tile down there as a base, and we're going to take this cutoff saw and go to work at cutting off the jam. Well, I believe that's got it. Let me get this little chunk out of here and see if this is going to fit in under there. Oops. I know what's happened. There's a two before in here, and we're not going to be able to cut that out very easily, but we can notch out the piece of tile so that it'll fit. And what we'll need to do is to notch it out so that it'll fit all the way under, and our grout line is going to be right here under the door, and that's desirable. Then next, let's slide this piece in place. We we'll have to leave a little space there. Now we have a piece over here that we're going to have to cut so that it's going to fit. But then we'll follow this entryway all the way out to the pattern that we have. This is the one that the homeowner picked out. Once we get this established, I think the rest of it is going to go together just like a jigsaw puzzle. I guess right now we better mark where we're going to cut out here and then get on out to the wet saw and take care of this part of it. Now this is a wet saw and for our project we've got a lot of cutting to do so it's a good idea to have this. We have rented it and you can rent one at a home center or one of the rental places. If you have a smaller job then you can probably get by with other ways to cut the tile. But for our purpose this is the one I wanted to use. Now comes the fun part, putting our jigsaw puzzle together. The first thing we're going to do is use this notch piece here and see if it fits the way it's supposed to. Looks to me like it's going to slide right in place. Sometimes you may need to use the rubber end of the hammer handle to get it down there, but that is good. Now let's see what else we can do. Hey, that's beginning to look really good, isn't it? Okay, now the next thing we need to do is to strike a center line going right down here so that we can work on this half and then come back up working on the other half. And in order to do that, we want to snap a chalk line. Now I've already measured over from the cabinets and I've got a place down here where we can hook up the chalk line and run it all the way back to the entrance back there. Now all we have to do is run it down here We've got a line marked out the same distance right here. Hold it down real tight and flat. And there we have our working chalk line. And now we need to mix up our adhesive, which is called Thin Set. Now there are two things you want to remember. One is to mix slow, and the other one is to work fast. And the reason we're going to mix slow is we don't want to create any air pockets in the Thin Set. And the reason we work fast is this stuff dries really quickly. So we might as well just get started right now. And we'll start over here at the beginning, which is a good place to start. And what we're going to be using is a notched trowel. And the reason for that is you get much better adhesion when you're able to leave these little gaps in here. Now when you put this first one in place here, you want to push down on it so that it's even all the way around. And for this one over here, I'm just going to butter the back of it 
And remember, we're working from this center line right here, going all the way across the length of the bathroom. Now even after you get the tile down, you have a little bit of time to move it around a little bit to be sure it lines up. Well, as you can see, we've made pretty good progress. I want to remind you though, when you're going to have to cut pieces off to go up against the wall up here, be sure you subtract a quarter inch so that you're going to end up with a good size grout joint. Now this little tool that I'm using is called a grout saw. And what we're doing is we're removing most of the stuff that was squeezed out when we put the tiles in place. We have to do that so that we'll have room for our grout. It looks like we've made a mess in here, but actually most of this is just dust that I've taken out of these cracks. When we get through with this, we'll vacuum all that up. Well, the vacuum got most of it, but as you can see, it didn't get it all, but the sponge is going to get the rest of it. When we get through sponging and get it all clean and dry, we can start our grouting. And that's the most exciting thing because it's actually the finishing touch. Now we're applying the grout. It's sort of a fun thing to do. A lot of people wonder about all of this that slops over on the side that doesn't go into the grout joints. Don't worry about that. Comes in powder form. You add water to mix it. We got the kind that is going to match almost perfectly the color of the tile. I think that's going to give us a real good look when it's all over with. Well, this is our final sponging, which means we're through. And it really does look great. And remember, it's a do-it-yourself project. One thing I want to remind you of though, you should put a sealer on here to protect the grout. You want to wait about four to six days now before you put the sealer on there so it's completely dry. If you have questions about this, why don't you contact us on the internet? It's michaelholligan.com.